Hey, it's the Terminian Hero here, and we're playing Metroid 2 Return of Samus. This is an old Game Boy classic, I guess I would say. It's not the most popular Metroid game, in fact it's one of the more less popular games, but it was known as being one of the really good Game Boy games. And I'm gonna play through it. So let's get started. So we got Samus here, we got the first in-game appearance of Samus's gunship. Which does nothing for us right now, but it should fully restore our health and our ammo. So basically, in the story of this game, we're heading to planet SR388, which is where we are now. And we have to get rid of all the Metroids. This is their home world, and we need to get rid of them, because they're too much of a threat. Uh, when I defeated that enemy there, he dropped some energy, which is health. That's a missile, which we already have max missiles. Notice we start with 30. We start with 30 missiles and 99 energy. And hey, look, a new feature that wasn't in the first game. We can shoot down. Yeah, we also start with the ability to use our morph ball. So we start with a lot of stuff that you don't start with in the original Metroid. And there's a little secret tunnel here for a shortcut. If you're curious at all about what we missed, it wasn't much. See, I'll just show it quickly here. That was literally all we missed. We're already back. So yeah, it is going to be interesting playing through this game now, because I never played this game much before. But then when another Metroid 2 remake came out, I just played that over and over again, non-stop. So, yeah, this, it's gonna be a bit interesting going back to the original here. Here, this is our save station. And this tunnel is very clearly a tunnel in this version of the game, in another Metroid 2 remake that was a hidden tunnel. I guess I could go right first, just to show what's there. Yeah, notice on the bottom right corner, it says we have 39 Metroids to defeat throughout the whole game. However, the game is split into multiple sections. Notice how we've got lava here. Down here, we've got a whole lava tunnel, which appears to be a dead end unless we could go through the lava. Every time you complete a section, and by that I mean defeat all of the Metroids in a section, then the lava level will lower and you'll be able to continue on further into the caves. And if we pause the game here, down in the bottom right corner, it says there's one more Metroid to defeat in this level. So, let's go find that one Metroid. Now, you might be wondering, how are we gonna defeat these Metroids without the Ice Beam? Isn't the Ice Beam their weakness? Oh, by the way, just on a side note, quick. This is gonna be in a 100% run of the game, but anyways, yeah. Aren't, isn't a Metroid's weakness ice? And we don't have the ice beam, do we? We just have the normal power beam. And the thing is, the ice beam is only the weakness for a Metroid if it's in its larval form. The Metroids in this game are mostly in other forms, so in this game, most of the Metroids are just weak to missiles, which is why we start off with 30 of them. 
because we need them right from the start, and we need a lot of them. Let's just get rid of these horn odes there, which don't actually appear to have horns, oddly enough. And here is our first Metroid. You wanna hit that weak spot on its bottom? And we defeated our first Metroid. And now we have an Earthquake, which means the lava level is lowering. Also, up here, we have this ball, which fully heals you. And this little icon here, which fully restores your missiles. So, it's always gonna be really nice whenever we see one of those things around. I mean, sure, your gunship can restore all your health and missiles, but we're not gonna be seeing that thing again for a long time. We don't really have any reason to go back to the surface until, like, the end of the game. Anyways, so let's just make our way back to where that lava was. Yeah, I... Since I'm taking all the time to show everything and get 100%, I'm not gonna be beating this game fast enough to get the best ending, but I am planning on making a video where I show all of the endings. So you at least get to see them. That also means I'm gonna have to beat the game like four times. Unless I just do it fast enough to get the first ending and then I just wait around long enough to get the other ones. Anyways, so you'll notice in here there is no longer lava in those little pockets. And there's no longer lava in this cave, so we can just head on down. Into new territory! Ow! So, here we see the lava again, we're not going to be able to go any lower than this yet. But pretty soon here, we're going to get to our first major area in the game. Once we get past these weird pancake enemies. <laughs> Come on, you flapjacks! I'm not gonna get killed by flapjacks! Okay... We should be just about there. We have a choice here of going either up or down. And we are gonna wanna go up first, just trust me on that. We're gonna wanna go both ways eventually, but up first is definitely a good way to go. It is brutal starting with only 99 energy. 
Like, I feel like Metroid games and Zelda games are always the hardest at the start, because you just have such a low max health. Anyways, so yeah, this is Area 1. The areas in this game don't really have a name, but in another Metroid 2 remake, they called this the Golden Temple. So that's what I'm gonna call it. We got another save station, which makes me very happy. Let's just explore this temple a little bit. The, this game is divided into three major types of areas. You've got your main caverns, which lead to the major areas. By the way, this door can only be opened with five missiles. It's basically like a red door from the first game, except since this game isn't in color, you can't tell that it's red. And we've got more fall bombs! Thank you, Chozo statue. We can use these morph ball bombs to blast our way down. Down to this... Missile tank, please? There we go. Which gives us, uh, which maxes out our missile count and gives us five extra missiles. And we can use these bombs to just bounce ourselves up when we're in morph ball mode. Or when we're just in normal mode, it just bounces us in general. But anyways, back to what I was saying before. There's three types of areas. There's the cavern areas, which just lead to the major areas. There's the building areas, like we're in now, which these areas are mainly here to... Um, to give you items. And there's the sort of nest, metroid breeding grounds type areas, which exist to, um, they, they exist to be places where you find lots of metroids. So here's our first energy tank. You can hold up to five energy tanks in this game, however there are six total. It's kind of like how... In Metroid 1, there were some energy tanks that you just couldn't hold, but they still exist. So with that little square next to our 99 health, how the square is filled in, uh, that means we actually have 199 health now. I guess we'll go this way. I'm not completely sure where I'm going, but I have somewhat of a good idea since I played so much of another Metroid 2 remake. What is this? We got the Ice Beam. At least we got our first Ice Beam. Similar to Metroid 1, uh, we can only have one beam at a time, which means that we're gonna have to collect the Ice Beam again to use the Ice Beam if we ever get any other beams. Thankfully, there are like three places in this game where you can find the Ice Beam. And you can always recollect it from the same place you got it before, too. So there'll never be a point where it's just gone forever, which is good, because, like I said, larval Metroids can only be defeated with the Ice Beam. So this here is sort of a little treasure room. 
We got one missile tank already. And there's another one below us. And one above us. Although the one above us is a bit tricky to get to. So let's let's try to bomb jump up there. That's that is legitimately tricky. It'd really be best to wait until we have the spider ball, which isn't very far away from here, but I don't want to have to backtrack after we get the spider ball. You know what I think I can do, actually? Oh, maybe you can't do that trick in this game. I was thinking I could jump after being bounced up by the morph ball. And that right there is the spider ball, but we can't get to it from here. I really hate to leave this missile tank behind. Alright, forget it. I'll wait until I have the spider ball. Ow! I love how I can just freeze their shots in midair. Doesn't make any sense, but it's awesome. So now we're outside of the temple. We didn't fully explore the temple. By the way, we got another Metroid cocoon here, letting us know that a Metroid is nearby. But yeah, we'll finish exploring the temple later. Right now, I just want to get my spider ball. The spider ball is a very valuable item. It lets you go all over the place. And we got our spider ball. And with this item... If I can figure out how to use it... There we go. We can just climb across the walls. Any wall. It's not like in Metroid Prime where you have to specifically have a spider ball track. I guess this entire planet is magnetic, because you can just roll across any wall in the game. And the ceiling. You can just roll wherever. But I think that's about enough for this video. In the next video, we'll find the Metroid that came from this cocoon, we'll go get that missile tank we skipped, and we'll finish up the Golden Temple and continue on. I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.